In this video, you will learn how to join geometry and configure wall joins. You can use the Join Geometry tool to clean up and correct material quantities in your model. You can join the following elements to each other. The following objects shown in the table below will all automatically join when modelled. Here you can see the wall and floor on the left have not been joined. Notice the graphics and also the fact that the volume and area are inaccurate on the left hand side. In this case it's almost a 10% difference just on the wall element. Elements will take on different priorities when joined. For example, columns will be the dominant element when joining. You can change the join order which results in the correct materials, drawings and reinforcement arrangements. In the image below, notice two beams have had their join orders changed. When walls are joined, you can create a variety of different joints, a butt joint, a mitre joint, or a squared off joint. In the image below, you can see three different joins have been applied to the same two wall configurations. This again will affect the graphics and also the material quantities and reinforcement. Let's take a look at some of these joining properties and also wall joins in a new project. So instead of opening up project A, in this example here, We'll create a new project just to demonstrate these join conditions. So let's create a new project using the structural template and then we'll go ahead and select OK. Notice we're in level 2 and this is fine, we'll model down in this case and we'll demonstrate the joining just with two simple walls. On the structure ribbon select wall. Notice on the options bar, we've currently got height level 2. I'm going to select depth, and in this case, we'll go down to level 1. The default wall type is basic wall generic 200. We'll use this as our example. I'm going to begin by modeling a vertical wall like this, and then we'll model another wall that cuts across that. If we now study these two walls, we'll see that there's an intersection. But, of course, those walls are actually joined together. If I wanted to unjoin those walls, I could select one of the walls. This brings up the context ribbon, modifying walls. And here we have the geometry panel. So the geometry panel contains all of our join operations. So you can see I can join, unjoin, or switch the join order. And also, as we'll see a bit later on, it contains wall joins. So in this case here, let's unjoin geometry. And of course, we can now see that the graphics are inaccurate. Also, if I select this wall here, let's take a look at the area. You can see it's 17.1 square meters. And also the volume here is 3.420 cubic meters. If I go back to join, and we join those two elements together, of course, we now select this wall here. We can see that the area and also the volume have reduced. So this is now showing us the correct quantities of materials. And of course, also the drawing graphics look correct as well. Now, you'll notice here that the first wall I drew took priority. I can change that if I want. So I could go back to the geometry panel, go to the join pull down, and here I can switch join order. So if I select these two elements, you'll now notice that this wall takes priority and the vertical wall is now split. So let's now look at wall joins. To demonstrate this, we'll go back to the wall command once again. In the properties palette, let's change our wall type. So I'm going to use here the generic 300 millimeter wall. And again, I'll draw a vertical wall. What I'd like to do now is draw a blockwork wall that intersects with this concrete wall. So here you can see I've got interior blockwork 190 and I'll draw my wall out over here. Now, I'll draw this at 45 degrees but it really doesn't matter. So here are our walls and you can clearly see at the minute that the first wall I drew is taking priority and the blockwork wall is butting up against this. Now if we think about this from a construction point of view, you can see we've got a very sharp edge on this concrete wall, so that's likely to crack, and also the reinforcement will be very, very complicated in that area. So of course we're going to need to be able to configure that wall join a little bit better. 
To do this, we can select one of the walls. In this case, I'm going to select my generic wall. And again, that brings up the Modify Wall Context ribbon. Here, you'll notice we have Wall Joins icon. If I select this, Revit's now looking for any situation where we get a wall junction. So this will be at the start on the end of each wall. Here, I'm going to select the junction where we have these two walls joining. And once I've done this, on the options bar, you'll see that we have a series of different icons to configure this junction. So let's zoom up on the junction. And you'll notice at the minute that the butt joint is shown. And of course, as we know, the blockwork wall is butting up against the generic wall. If I click on next, you'll see that then it cycles round. And now you can see that we have our in situ concrete wall butting to our blockwork wall. But again, we have two very awkward shapes to try and cast and cut. So another option here would be to mitre. And you can see now we have a mitre joint. But again, that's not really what we're looking for in this example. You can see another option we have is square off. And this is a little bit more practical. So you can now see the blockwork wall is squared and the concrete wall is cast up to it. Of course, another option I have here is to again flip the condition. So you can now see the concrete wall has a simple square end and the blockwork wall is cut and butted up. So from a construction point of view, this is a much more practical application. And of course, it's going to affect how things are reinforced and also the material quantities of the blockwork and in situ concrete. OK, so that concludes this lesson on wall joins and material joining. Of course, in later lessons, we'll be utilising both of these tools more and more. OK, you can close your project without saving.